Please listen up and listen closely. Okay. Um, this problem that we keep on having every week of not getting the inspirational speaker is getting boring. It's getting tiresome. And it's actually part of the root cause of why we don't achieve our other goals as well. If you don't see the connection, I'm going to walk everybody through essentially what I see as, let's say, uh, basically a lack of strategic thinking or maybe a lack of strategic awareness or a lack of um, strategic purpose in what we're doing. Okay, so this isn't a happy all hands. I'll just say that up front and I'll tell you what's not so happy. Okay, so it's mostly bad news. All right, number one piece of bad news. Um, our occupancy is dropping. So we had at record 90% occupancy now in April. It's at 71.9. Now, depending upon a few ways you measure this on Airbnb, which can be also inconsistent, it goes between 71 to 75. However, it is clearly lower than what it should be. Now, the result, also as well, our hospitality performance is also slipping. And this is three times in a row. So happily, by the time we reached our semester goal, we were closely to almost 82, 83. It would have been great as a company to continuously see uptrend or at very least stability on the hospitality performance. But unfortunately, it is just going down, which makes this idea of even defending at 80% more of a challenge every day. Okay, more bad news. I hope somebody has a plan for how we're gonna raise $30,000 today from our daily sales because that's how far off we are on our target. Our target is 400,000, which we set at the beginning of the month, but it doesn't seem like we're gonna be close to actually achieving that. And this curve is a daily sales burn down curve. When you see the burn down curve go up towards the end, that is a bad sign, because as you get towards the end of the month, there are less opportunities, of course, to actually initiate sales. If you see the sales curve go down, that is a good sign. So I've been watching this curve, a few months and it always burns upwards at the end of each month so not very good okay so i need to give everyone's attention to these two problems the revenue goals are clearly off track and the strategy is stagnant so i'll tell you what i'm going to do um i need everybody to wake up and as a result i'm not paying any individual bonuses for april of this month and i'll tell you why We have come to the point where strategic thinking is now center and urgent. We're a very large company. There's almost 40 people who work here. A lot of people are very, very well paid, in fact. But if we spend each month doing all the wrong things that don't get us closer to our goal, that is a waste of time. And nobody should be bonused for wasting everyone's time. Okay? So I'm going to give you a clear plan where every one of you can actually add strategic purpose to where we need to go. And I'm also going to make it very clear why strategic purpose is now super urgent, all right? There is no longer much work available to do in execution, probably not much in supervision uh, coming up. Knowledge management is a problem that's getting solved as well. So strategy is now one of the bottom line levels of work that we need to do here in this organization. And since I haven't been able to get anybody's real attention for the past few months, hopefully this is a wake up call because we're about to embark on another semester with big goals ahead. And if everybody is not really ready at this point to commit to these goals, are we ready? Then we probably won't reach our other goals in six months time. So please, if I don't have your attention, maybe I have it now and we can start thinking together about how we can fix this problem. All right, but in order to fix this problem, I need to share some information with you, which I recently discovered. So hopefully you'll pay attention to this. You'll remember what I'm going to explain and you'll be able to add your insight your creativity and your mind here. Now, if you don't think you can think strategically, you shouldn't work here. Simple as that, all right? If you don't think you can add any strategic insight or offer any strategic benefit, you shouldn't be working at Book of Vista. It means that you are not really thinking about anything. There is always a point for everyone to do to improve our strategy. So let me share this information, take out of what you will, but uh, I think this is important on my part as a leader so that everyone can see what's going on. All right, the first thing, where do we actually get our revenue from? And what is the flow of money across from the market into our management actually look like? Now, last week I showed you guys this chart, but we've refined it a bit and I wanna explain it again, okay? 
Most of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is in this pool. This is called asset under management. Asset under management is simply the value of all the properties that we have collected together in our portfolio. This asset pool, depending upon how it's valued, is between 60 to $30 million, all right? So replacement cost, meaning if we actually owned and sold all the properties in the entire portfolio, it would probably be worth around 60 million. But based on what we're generating for each property in terms of profit, it's probably closer to a smaller number, maybe even 20 to 30 million. This is what we do every day. This is how we host guests. This is what we talk with partners. This is what our agents work on. This is what the AI tools and everything functions out to be. This is the purpose of BVGo, Bigger, all these particular uh, items. The current leaders of this pool are Marcel, Kyla, and Bella. And they are looking at how to lead the operations to manage this pool. The current technical leaders are by Unviti, leading the technology and thinking about ways to automate processes, share knowledge, and improve our effectiveness and efficiency. Now, we want to get renewed contracts because we are essentially a service. We function as a service to property partners who don't want to manage their own properties and have us and entrusted us to actually look after it. So we are able to preserve this pool of AUM by renewing contracts. Now, every now and then, we have to close an account. We haven't closed an account because sometimes we can't work with a particular partner. Now, for partners we cannot work with, we probably need to put them on a blacklist because we've tried our best and they just won't change their minds. However, we need to actually ask ourselves, was the partner the issue, was the timing the issue, or potentially the property benefit from a different owner. In those cases, we should not abandon closed accounts, but rather we should recirculate it to this idea of a potential AUM. Now, this is the part where we have not really thought too much about. And as a result, we haven't invested much about. And as a result, we haven't achieved our goals. So let me illustrate what this idea is, how we're going to improve it, how we're going to fix, how we're going to start achieving our goals from this point on. So what is the potential asset under management, you might ask? What does this concept actually mean? Well, this concept is slightly different from just doing marketing, from doing the website. What this means is a realization that we discover new properties, new assets that we can manage every day. And this discovery happens either through active or passive means. Active means, Wayana goes out, finds a construction site. Nanda goes out, finds a construction site. That is active discovery. That is a potential partner that we need to go and discover ourselves. Passive, what is passive? We write content. People find us through social media. People find us through a web search. That's passive discovery. This particular process is managed by Ghani as our VP of marketing. He brings in a flow of new potential assets under management that go into this collective warehouse of potential assets under management. Now. I estimate that the size of this particular pool would be around almost half a billion dollars if we actually remember and if we actually calculate the full size of it. Now, what does it exactly mean? Um, I couldn't find actually property owners in a timeline, so uh, I'm just going to use these bikers. Now, some property owners are going to take a longer time to mature to become our partners. Some property owners are already ready to go this week, perhaps today there's going to be an appreciation for this span of time. Now, what matters is that we do not just leave this pool of assets under management unthought of, unforgotten, okay? We need to actually think about how to actually manage this pool so that we get new assets under management and then get those assets into our managed AUM. Now, I talked about the previous semester and why we failed. Part of it was here. Part of it is inefficiency in operations perhaps not choosing exactly how to understand where revenue is being logged. But even then, that would not account for fully more than 30 to 40% of the difference in our revenue target. Most of the difference would actually be made up by thinking more deeply, thinking more carefully about how this is done. Now, currently this pool is managed by essentially one person, just by Della. Della is a trainee in doing this as well. She's been on this job, coached by me for only a few months. Currently, over on this side, there's only one person, and that's Eric. Eric is in senior business development. And as you can see, this is probably one of our strategic mistakes. If we are going to really grow this side, then how are we going to really do it? 
when 38 of us don't actually work on this at all, and there's only uh, two people who actually work on this. All right, this is an overview, an important information that everybody should be aware of. I hope you guys, after I announce the bonus uh, removal, will really digest this and understand this as a whole. This is the way that money flows into Boca Vista. This is the way that money flows out of Boca Vista. And this is how we as a company actually grow strategically. Does anybody have any questions about how this flow of revenue actually works? No? Okay, hopefully that's clear now. So now don't say you don't understand what the strategic picture is because I've actually explained it to everyone. All right, so now that we have that understanding, let's go on and talk more. What is it exactly that we need to create? So previously, instead of actually, here's, here's one mistake that I saw we make. This is a pretty obvious mistake. Now, I fully appreciate April was a uh, holy and religious holiday, but I think we didn't really plan very smart. I think we, we didn't really ask ourselves, all right, as upper managers, is a particular team and allocation of labor sufficiently done in a way such that I'm planning to reach the goals while rewarding my team with their holidays. Don't really see any of that happening. Um, the other mistake, of course, is this, right? This is our About Us page. This hopefully has a picture of you guys if you're a full-time employee here. Now, the uh, yellow boxes indicate people who are working between the existing asset under management and the new asset under management. There's, uh, there's not a lot, okay? The, Green is the people who are fully focused on working on potential asset under management. Oh, sorry, I wrote that as, as incorrect. This should be potential asset under management. The red are all the people working on existing asset under management, okay? So basically, we have everybody in the company working on this side, and there's almost nobody working on this side, all right? So that is a mistake. If we really want to grow our revenue, then we need to have more focus and more energy and more thought process about here. We really need to ask ourselves, is it really make a lot of sense to have everybody on this side? This side has already kind of like adequate performance. It can be better, but we're not going to see really rising in growth if we do not reallocate our teams accordingly. Okay, so that's mistake number one. Uh, perhaps mistake number two after the first one. All right, what else are we doing that's incorrect? This is something I need to kind of make sensible across the entire company. I don't see any strategic milestones actually on the potential AUM are not very many. Most of our strategic milestones every month are about how we can improve or fix the existing AUM. Nothing on the potential. I don't think anything today even actually. I haven't taken a look, but I doubt it. All right. So we don't have any milestones or any strategic ideas for how we're going to actually tap into this potential AUM, then we are essentially setting ourselves up for failure every month. In fact, these are not strategic milestones if we're not even addressing where the strategic opportunity is. All right, the next thing, doesn't seem like anybody cares. Uh, Kyla has asked the entire room here to get your support and your feedback. And there's only about two or three people who actually participate or give any feedback. And most of these people just agree. They don't debate, they just agree. And so basically this particular culture of really not thinking about strategy, not discussing strategy, not moving on from where we used to be, all right, and execution, supervision, knowledge, is what's really hindering our long-term progress as a company to actually achieve our goals. We just don't seem to care. All right. so. Why does this hurt? This hurts because every month we have about 6,400 hours that we as 40 full-time employees, and that's not including the intern time as well. And we're doing the wrong thing. We're doing the wrong thing because we're not really reaching our goals. So that is a waste of time and that's a waste of energy. So let me also show the company evolution. For everybody here, you should recognize this. This is the leadership planning table. In semester two, we struggled with execution so we've moved past that. That is not any longer a major area of focus. We should not really go down and ask ourselves how many people and how many hours we need to focus on execution. That is a solved problem with AI, with the tools, with everything that we have, with our systems. 
some management is getting to be less of a problem too. So we need to move on from that too. We need to start asking ourselves, do we still need to have a lot of focus on sub-management or can we increasingly ask for better knowledge management and automation to take that place? Knowledge management is something that we are currently in sort of a sunset role, okay? So there is obviously a lot more knowledge that we need to accumulate, but by accumulating more knowledge, it doesn't mean that we're applying the right or prioritizing the right knowledge towards our goals, which now means that we are in the era now of strategy. Strategy is now the most important thing as a baseline to focus on. So if you're not sure what strategy means, it means this. Can you spend the entire month working hard, doing what you're supposed to, and still not actually make any impact? And the answer is increasingly yes. It seems like it is very possible to work hard, do an entire month, and not reach the goals. So we need you to kind of like kick this in, right? If we're not reaching our goals, then the individual bonus shouldn't kick in because essentially there's no bonus for effort. The bonus is for thinking strategically, to ask questions. Now, you might avoid asking strategic questions in these particular areas. You might not want to offend the ideas of a more senior person. I can assure you that is a bad personal strategy. We want you to debate. We want you to take your facts, your information that you see on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you work closer with users or further away from users, we need those insights and we need those debates to happen now, 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 right here, because this is the point where we can figure out does the ideas and our strategy that we choose to follow for the next six months actually make sense? And everybody is seeing a different perspective. Everybody has different access to information. So let's get into a culture where we can openly talk about strategy without fear of reprisal, without fear of whatever, and start learning how to think about strategy. Because this is where we currently are in terms of our company's evolution. Okay, so what can you do? No matter if you're an intern, no matter if you've been here for 10 years or 10 days, you can do something because inaction is not tolerated. We all need to participate. We all need to think in order for this to work. So what can we do? Well, I don't want to, I want people to practice strategic thinking. I don't want to have to have an answer for every particular strategic problem that happens here that isn't delightful, that doesn't really progress anybody along their personal careers. And so I'll feed you with some ideas though. I'll get this started in this process. Number one. Here's an idea. Engineers can actually help, not just by reducing engineering metrics or whatever is inside, but really can help purposefully by helping operations people remove repetitive tasks, upgrade knowledge, so that they may have more career mobility. We probably need senior operations people to come and join us over in the potential AUM side and help think of new ways that we can actually engage and attract more partners to work with Buca Vista so we can actually grow our revenue. Shift managers. Shift management is not a routine. Shift management is control over the career and the direction of how to develop everybody in the company. The way I've been seeing it used could be more delightful, could be more insightful, could be more strategic. You could BBW people into areas where there is need for strategic oversight and strategic knowledge and observation. Sometimes that happens, sometimes it doesn't, but I think this is a very powerful tool that we have and we don't necessarily use it in a way that is delightful. HR and senior managers can responsibly offer holidays to employees after discussions about how to reach the strategic goals are in place and after they have been confirmed. I think oftentimes we find that with the automation, we can allow for more time to work on what we want to work on or spend less time at work, more time with friends and family. And that's okay. I ultimately want that to happen, but not at the cost of losing our goals, okay? It should not be we're negligent, we just forget, we go off and then we come back and then we're left with a problem that we cannot solve because the time to solve it has evaporated. If you're working in marketing, working in marketing oftentimes is a privilege because you don't have to go out and risk shame or contact with, uh, uh, with new people, with strangers. But that avoids insights and that avoids understanding with ultimately our users. I think we need to get closer to our partners so that we can understand their behavior and make sure that the products and the things that we write about are actually relevant, they're helpful, and they're delivered at the right time. The closer we can get to our partners and understand what it is that they think, what it is they do, the more well-managed our potential AUM can be. If you're an intern, if you're an intern, you've been here for a few months already, you know how the culture works, feel free to ask questions. We often are very, very delighted to find that interns have actually discovered something that people who have been working here for years have not seen. Be 
courageous to ask these questions because sometimes you'll find out that maybe the emperor isn't wearing any clothes and everyone has just agreed not to see it. So ask the questions, engage in strategic dialogue. There are opportunities to do it every morning in the URC and uh, jam with your supervisors. Now, I want to make one thing clear. Oftentimes we see a lot of people get invited into strategic discussions and I often cut those discussions uh, shorter because the point is this, right? The point is during the strategic brainstorming, if you don't have any particular context or understanding, it is harder to come up with any insights. So that type of time is better shared on execution. However, afterwards, if you see the milestones posted and you see very good reasons based on your own experience why those milestones are incorrect or don't really make any impact, please share, okay? Anybody can actually find a strategic error. And over time, I think for Khan, we should reward people who do that and save the company months maybe years of going down a pathway that isn't helpful for anybody. Okay, all right, let's talk now about the future, okay? So we're at the beginning of semester five, and just like most semesters, I always see this happen. We, we, we often, if we achieve on any semester, we kind of take a mental break and then we slow down again. But hopefully today, we'll get us back into a mode where we're ready to achieve. The revenue goal is actually quite humble. We were hoping to get a bit higher, but this is something a little bit more realistic. It's $3 million. And the overall rating is 4.8 and a five-star percentage of 80%. We've already gotten to this point where the hospitality goals are within reach and can be stabilized over time as we add more properties, as we add more guests. So I'm really hoping that we can actually get and contain this particular hospitality score. If you don't know, this means that we are super hosting. All right, 4.8, 80% means effectively we are consistently and stable at a super host level. All right, here's the promise. So 5X individual bonuses, if the company achieves a 3 million sales target, it will be from this month, April 1st, all the way to the end of September, measured on uh, October 5th. Qualified interns again will receive a 5 million appreciation bonus. Now, I wanna make this part clear because I really want us to focus on the revenue. And the revenue is important at this point, because once the hospitality has actually been achieved to a certain point, the ability to pay larger bonuses, improve people's careers, really comes from how much growth we're getting, all right? So this is the deal. If we reach the revenue goal and two of the hospitality goals, we'll pay 5X individual bonuses for September, 2024. If we reach the revenue goal and only one hospitality goal, we'll pay 3X individual bonuses for September, 2024. This is important. This is a provision that is modified. If we do not reach the revenue goal, there is no bonus. So the previous semester, we got bonuses based on reaching two hospitality goals. My expectation in the future is the hospitality goals should by now be more and more covered by our decades of experience and execution should be far easier. And it should be much easier to preserve that hospitality target. Okay. All right. So that's essentially the lay down for the next semester. Now, once again, the common rules. The bonuses are calculated on weighted averages of monthly individual bonuses and caps will apply to correct our particular behavior on underachievement month, but we'll also allow for bonus boosts on months where that comes into being as well. Okay. All right. Yes. Uh, somebody raised their hand. Uh, yes, it is me, sir. Furkan. Okay. Furkan, how's it going? Uh, yeah, I would like to clarify about your statement. If the, if the revenue is not achieved, then it means no bonus given so it is applied for semester term or included into monthly term as well uh i haven't decided on that one this is just the semester goal right now okay? okay so the semester goal means that it's a bonus on top of bonuses all right remember because we already get our monthly bonuses and this is for the semester so this is for the semester goal but for that um let me think about it and i'll come back to you okay but i want everyone to basically wake up today Wake up today to the fact that it is strategically important for us to be able to hit revenue goals. It is not just go back and do what you were doing again. It is not just, okay, I'll carry on and believe that somebody else will think about strategy. We really need everyone here to really commit and think about strategy, okay? Because there is no more real work in thinking about some of the other things like execution, subsupervision. These are work that is already well understood, okay? 
All right. Thank you, Furkan, for asking questions. I want to actually say thank you to Furkan because it takes courage to actually ask these questions in front of a large audience. And he's asking it on behalf of everybody here. So share some love. I give him some applause. I think that's good. Okay. If we're going to have any discussion, let's have this discussion as early as possible at the beginning of the semester, not towards the end, not in the middle, not like whatever later. If you want to actually figure out how to achieve the goals and you see that something isn't right, then speak up. I'll also mention uh, Bella. Bella actually took a lot of responsibility for declaring the part correctly with me over the weekend. We spent a lot of time jamming after work hours to actually get it right. She discovered that I made a strategic mistake in actually calculating a target for seven months instead of six. So thank you also, Bella, for bringing that up. That also makes everybody's, uh, you saved me a lot of shame by announcing a goal that I would have to retract in public, but also she was thinking about everybody here in terms of what is possible and what is not possible. Okay, this is all the kind of behavior that I'm talking about right now, all right? So I don't want to stop everybody, but we really do need to wake up. We need to re realize that this is important and it is something that we can all think about, all right? There's no cozy corner where you can avoid this anymore. All right, cool. Uh, let's see. All right, for interns, we'll keep it simple, all right? Interns, just the same rules as before. If we reach three goals, uh, the full five million, two goals, two million, one goal, one million, all right? Okay, that's it. Uh, this is probably one of the most important all hands for the semester where we set our goals. So uh, hopefully next month, next week, we'll start seeing improvements, and more alignment towards where we need to be. Okay, I'll hand it over to, do I give it to Weda or do I give it to Amanda? Okay, weren't you guys hosting last week? Okay, all right, over to you, Amanda. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Jim, for uh, presenting the vision mission. Uh, for everyone, let's get motivated to reach the semester goal. Okay, so for the next session, we will uh, be presenting the hospitality and revenue target, which will be uh, presented by Kak Kaila. Kak Kaila, the stage is yours. Yes, okay, uh, a second, please. All right. Um... Okay, can you see this clearly? All good, okay. Okay, before we start, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Anyone would like to um, guess? Kyla, sorry, I think it's like cut. The Bugit Vista logo is close. I know. Intentionally on this part. <laughs> Anyone would like to guess who is the model or the couples in this lobby of area? <laughs> and not the property, because I think everyone else already know what is property. Yeah, Guinness and? Anyone would like to know the model's name that we keep on using for the last 10 listings, I think. No? Okay, I think at some point we kind of have to recruit her because she keeps on appearing on all of our properties for the shoot. So, okay, let's see that. Okay, um, anyone would like to do us the favor of reminding what type, what, what is the property name for this new? Okay, uh, delegate is right. This is Villa Kate. No longer Tantram Tantram is the previous Google Maps, I think. Okay, thank you, Dela. Okay, um, I think we have a couple of minutes. So I would like to take the time specifically for this one to actually bring this up to your attentions. All right, um, on the chat, kindly uh, wrote down which options uh, would you like to book first. Just write either it's A, B, C, D, based on these um, hero photos. Or not, not, not at all. If you pick A, A, E, sorry, it means you don't want to book anything based on these hero photos. Okay. Okay, we have many D, D, C, A. Oh, Marcel E, interesting front of you. Okay, must be B, has some aesthetic there. Okay. All right. Um, okay, I, I think. Uh, we can closing on here. Most of us basically put on D. So let's try to see the properties first. Anyone would like to open uh, the mic and uh, say the name of this property? Maybe Vito. What is option B? Do you know which property it is? Option B. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. Okay. Um, maybe put the idea. Mm, I'm not sure. Um, then Bingin, no? Uh, yes, Bingin, correct. Which mm. property? 
no del sol not gatu no uh, permanan no ah anyone would like to say Vito and Putri Widya uh, <laughs> okay uh, maybe Kashali knows which property on the option B uh, B is the display uh, size excellent okay Erika has put the answer there but uh, a bit incorrect A is Maharaja actually uh, we have B as the displays, uh, C as Breeze Hidden, and the fourth one, or D, is as the village. So these properties are actually being recently updated, on especially and rearranged, especially on the Hero photos. The quick vote that I was trying to make a point here was basically to test our own audience within the, the company. If you are a guest, which property would you like to book first? Just based on the heater photos, because we've been having this meeting with Airbnb team and they keep on mentioning the importance of having and positioning the correct heater photos to be able to attract more bookings. Considering that's important, so I would like for the content team especially to take notes on this and every other theme. If you see the new listing being announced by Weda or anyone else, please do not be shy on giving feedbacks on checking those. Let's keep it internal first before we list them or publish them outside. Okay, uh, let's move on. Yeah, uh, D1 looks like Kubu Nyang Yang, but this is as it feel it should. Okay, thank you. All right, um, this is what has been announced by Mr. Jing previously. Our event target is 3 million for the semester and hospitality target, 80% for the five star ratings and 4.8 for the overall rating. Let's see first on the hospitality side regarding how much have we, how, how far have we come actually. Okay, so for accuracy, uh, sorry, before we start, this is pretty aligned with Mr. Jing again because this is all through a bad news train. So we're gonna have to see many of decreased positions in every metrics. Okay, so for accuracy, we have 0.4 decrease. We are at 81.5%. For the check-in, this is the most significant ones, actually 1.7%. We are at 85.9%. Yesterday, Marcel actually um, supervised a couple of things directly himself, I think after working hours, and he has some findings regarding to check-ins. I think it's um, it's a case that is not always happen, but there is also a major supervision cause. So, for the people who would like, uh, who are actually assigned to be the supervisor in operation side, especially in, in guest hosting, kindly make sure that the first thing you take a look during your operations or your supervision would be to ensure today's check-in would happen smoothly. Next on cleanliness, also decrease 0.5 percent. We are at 79.6 percent, back under 80 percent. Okay, for the communications, also decrease 0.5 percent. We are at 84. On the location, uh, third week also in row, 0.8 percent. We are at 73.8 percent. And last but not least, on the value we are at 78.5 percent in overall for the quality um we are at 80.8 percent for the five star ratings and 4.72 as you guys can uh, basically see from the patterns that we've been having for the last couple of semesters um we actually start with a pretty stable or, or pretty high numbers and then uh we'll having the numbers decrease over time due to the amount of reviews getting in or getting it increased with the amount of reviews that we receive. It could be uh, both ways. But we, what we can actually point out from this one, this is not our best performance. And we can really take a look into this going onwards from this semester. Okay, last but not least on the revenue target achievements, how far are we? Um, at the moment, we have achieved uh 946,000 US dollar so we still have around uh 68 percent left we still have 152 days exactly 30 days from the total months so for everyone working 
on the manage AUM, let's try to optimize them as good as we can. And for the team that will be assigned on the potential AUM, let's try to focus our discoveries, our initiatives, and our strategies to generate more and having more that we can to contribute to the company's success. Okay, I think that's all. Uh, this is for me. Uh, who should I give respect to? Okay, thank you, Mendes. Okay, thank you so much, Kakaila, for presenting the uh, hospitality and revenue target. So let's move on to our next session is weekly mission inspiration. Uh, could please uh, weather to share the screen? Okay, thank you. Uh, for the first one would be, okay, since the transform our guest is empty, let's move on to Bukit Vista's mission is to inspire the light through hospitality innovation that positively transform our partner. For both of the story, we have from Ka Erika. Ka Erika, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Amanda. So uh, the last week was the first week where we're back to have RTT after uh, Lebaran, guys. So we had to RTT uh, last week, uh, which the first one, uh, as you see there, uh, we are unintentionally matched with our uh, dress color uh, that night. So. Most of us were green, uh, so pretty nice in the picture. And we had a Bradley and also Shala, which uh, who are planning to invest in Bali, but they're still, you know, uh, want to get more information. And we also have Jessica and also Cody. So Jessica and Cody is uh, American, and then they also just settled, uh, decided to be uh, to settle in Bali. And they actually have a pretty big project. Uh, Cody just bought like 76 R of land in Padang Padang Hill. And then he is interested to get our service to analyze uh, the investment. And we also have Rasmus. So Rasmus also has a pretty huge project in Bukit Area as well. And we also interviewed Ram, uh, Rasmus for BBR. And then Kat Shalin uh, was the one uh, interviewing Rasmus. So thank you, Kat Shalin, for being the hero because I need to assist the guests uh, that day. So, yep. So that's for the RTT on 23rd. Uh, we probably can move on to the next one. Uh, with it. So this one we have, oh, Marcel and Masafits, yeah, on, on the opening. <laughs> So welcome Marcel in Bali's RTT, also Mas Hafiz. Uh, so wait, 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 where is the picture? Eh, eh, ngeblur nih habis ada fotonya Marcel sama Mas Hafiz nih. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> well, where is the picture? Yeah. So yep. So this is pretty. This was pretty crowded and very fun as well. Uh, Mas, this is I think Mas Hafiz's first uh, RTT in Bali. Uh, I hope he is not traumatized because it was ended around 10 30 uh the rtt so we had uh, our new potential partner uh, from lokongan villas but Victor and Bu Bu Atika, and we also in invite our guests as well and also pak made and bufoni so pak made is our excellent existing uh, partner who has a pretty excellent uh quality of cleanliness as well in his villa so he shared a lot of things to us uh, as the property manager and also uh, to Pafitar and Bu Atika as a uh, new property owner. So it was actually very inspirational and also insightful uh, RTT as well. So, yep, uh, back to you, Amanda. Okay, thank you so much, Ka Erika, uh, for the story. Let's move on to our next one is Bukit Vista's mission is to inspire the light through hospitality innovation that positively transform our employees. Uh, both of the stories will be presented by Ka Furkan. Okay, Ka Furkan, thank you. The yours. Thank you very much, Amanda. Uh, I, uh, whether I think you can open the RTT first, yeah. Um, yeah, the RTT documentation first. So um, last week, um, Bandung, uh, Bukit Vista Bandung team conducted the roundtable talk with uh, several entities in Bandung. We have uh, two entities coming in from um, Teknik Industri ITB, uh, Sekolah Business Management ITB, and also the uh, decoding. Uh, we also invited the alumni. Uh, from these institutions, Kaila from the uh, Technic Indus Industry and also uh, Karehan uh, from SBM ITB, and they are uh, reconnecting with uh, their teachers, their lecturers, and it was a very uh, very fun discussion, connecting back to memories and also talking about the possible collaborations that we can do from uh, from guest lecture and uh, project collaborations and such. 
it was very interesting. Uh, and in my part, I actually conducted uh, more uh, more talking into decoding with Bella, which leads into the next uh, stories that I will I would like to tell, which is you can close the documentation with that and move into the onboarding bankit students. Yeah. So basically, uh, one of the uh, programs that we are currently on going collaboration with decoding is having uh, bankit students and last week we conducted the onboarding process already and i think Veda is out from the screen so let me try to help him out and share my screen can you can you see my screen now okay thank you amanda for your confirmation so this basically uh uh so this um meeting onboarding co actually conducted uh, remotely, but I was in decoding's office in Bandung. Uh, I I asked them place because I have nowhere to go <laughs> after on the <table> talk. <laughs> so I I uh, I asked them if if it's okay to use the office to conduct the onboarding, and they are very welcome uh, to to welcome me to their office and conduct the onboarding session for the bucket students. So yeah, uh, and by the way, they, they are working on three projects, which is uh, room pricing model and that's similar property clustering and also guest request management and we have some mentors assigned there uh, from uh, krishna and also vidya and also kvd to be working on them so yeah uh, we will wish them luck and see what they will do in bukit vista thank you amanda back to you okay thank you Kavarkon. Uh, i think we have uh, trouble with his connection so please Kavarkon, please help me to share the screen <laughs> So we can continue with the weekly mission inspiration. Okay, Weda is back. Okay, uh, so let's move on to the last one for weekly mission inspiration is inspiring the hospitality industry through technological innovation. For the first one will be from Kak Felix. Kak Felix, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Amanda. Uh, Atlas have over achieved the SLA of 40% in month revenue, where Atlas have achieved contributions of 77.58 percent from all in month revenue which is around 1.778 billion rupiah uh, however there is a room for improvement on atlas embedding dna version 2 such as the number of decisions being restricted because it gives a really high price change uh, some of those decisions are wrong since uh, but some of them are right uh, so yeah we will improve this next Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kavalix. Okay, let's move on to uh, our next one. Wait, I think your screen is gone again. Maybe Kavalix, please help us to share the screen. Okay, thank you. So for the next one will be from uh, Putu Widya. Widya, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Kamanda. So yeah, uh, align with uh, Atlas uh, Mars uh, after two weeks yeah, of operation since uh, 14 of April, Mars has uh, managed to achieve the 20% in month target and even exceeded uh, by 25%. So yeah, going forward, we will continue to optimize Mars so it can contribute more to the in month revenue and yeah, can simplify or streamline the knowledge management automation in RM. Okay, that's from me. Thank you. Back to you, Kamanda. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Widya, for presenting your story. For the last one from uh, this story is from Kak Fidi. Kak Fidi, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Amanda. Um, we created the feature for uh, Belief and Calendar page, where we allow more results to be shown in page by adding functionality to the filter and also partial loading so that it's faster. However, what, it in, uh, what we observe is that the SLA for that is set in the beginning of the milestone it, are not achieved. And this is attributed to the um, like elimination of the activity from the awareness chapter. This brings us into a very good conclusion of aligning the goal across chapter when starting a milestone. So yeah, this will be for sure uh, something that we learn for next milestones.
Okay, thank you so much, Kafidi, for sharing your story. And then let's move on to our next session, which is company theme, target, and achievement, which will be presented by Kak Kaila. Kak Kaila, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, this is for Conrad. Okay, thank you for Conrad. Uh, this is actually for me, but let's, since we are basically at the end of April, let's get this first. This is the monthly theme uh, for this month. This is called First Impressions, Building Blocks of Growth. Pretty aligned with uh, what we have established early uh, when we start this meeting, which everyone contribution it will count for uh, the success that we can have as a company. So next one. This is a bit of uh, the explanations of the spirit itself. So first impressions, uh, foundation of success or uh, the building blocks of growth underscores the critical role of unity and basically each team's contribution to our company success. There is no such thing as saying each role is uh, insignificant or such because everything and everyone here plays a critical and pivotal, pivotal roles related to supporting our company's growth. This um, theme basically illustrates that every interactions and contributions regardless its size will be a good element in our organizational development. This approach values and acknowledge everyone's effort, also expects open communications and continuous improvements. Uh, what are the main things basically to point out, especially because we're heading onto the potential OM? Uh, we have four major things. This is development role that we're going to basically put our focus on. Uh, in laying the groundwork with leads, content team impact through professional visuals, not only to attract our the subscriptions or converting POM into AOM, but also to optimize our current or manage AOM, the customer success to keep on what we have in our current inventory, and tech integrations, obviously, to support the work's effectivity and efficiency. That's all for the money team. Let's try to uh, work alongside it monthly and Hopefully, we'll be able to see the result that we aim for. This is basically the recap for April, April target. We're going to still see the final result by the end of this day. For revenue, revenue target for this month, uh, we haven't been able to achieve uh, any of our targets. Okay, or awesome. At the moment, we have achieved 372 at 129. So it's about 93.2%. For we haven't been able to also achieve the five star percentage due to a couple of bad reviews that we receive, especially on Kubu Nyang Nyang. So, um, and the last one on overrating, uh, we have been able to achieve the OK target, but overall not a satisfactory not a satisfactory performance. What are our our opportunities basically for the revenue on April? Uh, this is basically what we can squeeze uh, during the last of the day. Until now, we have managed to have 66% occupancy, 4% increase from last week, 19% expired dates, 3% maintenance, and 5% owner usage. Uh, worth to note that the blocking for both maintenance and owner usage are pretty high uh, compared to a couple of months. Uh, this is especially for March and April. We only have 7% nights available to sell to achieve the remaining 27,000. Uh, to achieve the OK target, but at the point, uh, it is safe to say that we haven't been able to meet this desirable target. Okay, that's all. Thank you for coming. Uh, back to you, Amanda. Okay, thank you so much, Kakaila. Uh, let's move on to our next session, will be core value recognition. We have a few cards here. For the first one, will be from Kak Gani. Kak Gani recognize Kak Marcel and Kak Furkan. The floor is yours, Kak. Okay. I would like to recognize Marcel and Furkan for help others to help themselves. This is because uh, for being a good example of a conscious supervisor and showing hustle during BBW in business development. This evidence is uh, is the real because we we can achieve a potential OM is twenty thousand dollars this month. So I. I do see from the following up itself, it's able to uh, generate like 10,000 10, US dollars just following up. Uh, I see, uh, I do see Furkan is uh, meticulously uh, remind Dela and Erika and then Marcel showing the hustle to connect uh, this person. So we connect this person. So I do see a very good uh, example. And thank you, Furkan and Marcel, to, for the good work. 
That's it. Okay, thank you, Kazani, for sharing your story. And then for the next card will be from Kak Erika. Kak Erika, the floor is yours. Mm, okay, so I would like to recognize Kak Shalin. I haven't added more, one more, so uh, be the hero, never suffer, and high motivation because uh, last week uh, I was scheduled to have a meeting uh, while it's actually also the schedule for uh, BBR. So Kak Shalin stepped up, uh, Della uh, sent Kak Shalin to do the interview, and then she, yes, she did it. And it was a pretty long interview, actually, so uh, pretty good discovery. So thanks to Kak Shalit for uh, being the hero uh, that day. And I would like to uh, also recognize Weda uh, for always uh, for his high motivation, also be the hero for our RTT in Bali Base because he's uh, diligently uh, uh, available here to do the photo uh, photo yes. The documentation for the RTT also uh, be the BBR uh, organizer. So yes, thank you, Weda, for your assistance and also for Dea as well. So uh, uh, on yes, a uh, couple of days ago, we uh, actually need to have uh, an event. Uh, would like to attend an event called Building Permit Workshop in Finns. And there was in Ubud actually, and then uh, turned out that uh, we also running out of uh, what is it called a seat because we uh, registered pretty last minute, and then their uh, available seat also pretty limited actually. So uh, it it was beyond our expectation, and they are uh, keep negotiating the committee uh, so she can get a seat, and then she was joining the uh, she joined the event. And then she successfully uh, get the contact of the key person there. And even uh, she makes the key person following up to us uh, for the RTT dinner. So that's uh, pretty excellent uh, for the So applause uh, to her. Back to you, Amanda. Okay, thank you so much, Ka Erika, for sharing the stories. Okay, so for the next one will be uh, Kaforkon. Kaforkon have two cards here. Kaforkon, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Amanda. So basically, I would like to recognize uh, Kashalin for never settle on a file fast because uh, she improved employee handbook. Uh, so when I conducted the onboarding with Bangkit uh, Capstone students last week, I do not need to even treat the presentation back. I just need to stand by, prepare some pages on the website that we need to present and then present it directly. So it is very helpful. Thank you very much, Kashalin, for that. And second thing, I would like also to uh, recognize these four people. Uh, the first one, uh, to Dea, for arranging the uh, Roundtable Talk Bandung, approaching uh, the uh, the lecturers, the professors, and also the managers that you saw on weekly Asian Inspiration. And also thank you for Kayla, Bella, and Karehan for attending the Roundtable Talk Bandung in chat short notice. Thank you. Back to you, Amanda. Okay, thank you, Kavurkan, for sharing the story. Let's move on to the last uh, person. We have Matthew here. We uh, he have three cards here. Matthew, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Amanda. So, <clears throat> uh, first, I would like to uh, recognize Mas Bayu, Kak Chris, and Conan. So, a uh, few uh, back in a few days, uh, Conan and me was assigned to work on Bifigo Service Provider page. And of course, we experienced some frictions while working on it. But thanks to Mas Bayu and Kak Krishna, uh, we can uh, solve each problem that we faced. Uh, they carefully explaining and directing us to respect on the design process. And uh, Kona is definitely a great partner in exchanging idea when working on UI design. OK, uh, for the next one, this is yesterday, actually. I would like to recognize uh, Kak Fur and Kak Rifki. Both of them helped me to improve organization structure page design, which I am uh, uh, working on. And Kavurkan explained the, he spotted and he explained the wrong information in organization, organizational function uh, diagram. And he kindly explained the detail to directing me. After receiving information from him, I uh, immediately moved to uh, Tarifki and ask for his help to re redesigning the diagram. And he immediately do it. That's great. And for the last one, yeah, I would like to recognize Kak Abam and Kofidi. 
this week both ke Abam and ke Vidi help me a lot with bugs I experienced during designing website or and updating bigger updating some things on bigger too. Ke Abam mostly help me with uh, fixing the issue like when some widgets on WordPress can't work or when my additional CSS cannot be applied to the WordPress. On the, while on the other hand, COVID helped me with the issue in bigger of using one bank account for two properties under the same owner. Also, he, he yesterday initiatively informed me regarding the down performance of PC page so we can uh, in marketing can evaluate ourselves. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Matthew, for presenting the story. So uh, due to limited time, I think uh, we must keep the personal updates. And I see here there are no announcements as well. So I'm heading back it over to Weda to close the all hands meeting for today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Ka Amanda, for moderating the all hands today. Uh, also, sorry for the inconvenience of my network here. And for everyone, uh, good luck on reaching our target. Yeah. Semangat, everyone. And thank you for joining the all hands. Have a good day. Thank you for hosting, guys. Thank you, thank you for hosting and moderating. But everyone, thank please you. engage with the personal updates as in clear. Yeah? Yes. Please engage with the personal updates. Thank you, guys, for attending. Have a good day.